Welcome back, and now let's get the show started. President Mohamed Buhari has reappointed Godwin Emefele as the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria's DBN and has asked the Senate to confirm him. By the appointment, which came after wild speculations, Emefele has become the first governor of the Apex Bank to get a second term mandate since the return to civil rule in 1999. That's if the Senate confirms it. If they do. Mm. So uh, he was appointed in 2014 by former President Goodluck mm. Jonathan. Now, to look at this appointment and its implications with us this morning, I'd like to welcome Mr. Ayodeji Ebo, who is the managing director of Afrinvest Securities. Good morning. Good Thanks morning. For having me. Thank you for coming. And on my left, I'd like to welcome Dr. Emmanuel Abolo, who is DG Economic Think Tank Center. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. And also with us is the CEO of First Degree Consultants, Mr. Dego Kiramotala. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for watching. And joining us from Abuja is an economist, Mr. Tokwe Fashua. Good morning, Tokwe. Morning. Good to be here. Thank you very much. Now, so, uh, before this appointment was made, there were all kinds of speculations and all kinds of additions and subtractions. So, let me begin with you. What is the big deal? Well, uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, I, I think for an economy, you know, that is so diverse, and the expectation is so high, not just for Nigerians or even uh, the international economy. Um, it's a big deal. The central bank governor wields so much power. And um, without a doubt, there has been some stability, you know, uh, under this administration. You know, the foreign exchange rate uh, and also in terms of um, investors. Um, in the Nigerian economy, both local and international. So um, the reappointment of the CBN governor, um, understandably so, a lot of Nigerians were so expectant that what is likely to happen. But I feel personally that it will bring some stability uh, to the economy and also for our investors. So uh, it's encouraging that you know, we have a situation where um, the governor is given the opportunity to do uh, a second term. Mm -hmm. uh, going forward, uh, the indicators okay. are there, okay. and um, I, I believe it's a positive development. Yeah. Dr. Abolo, so um, we are looking forward to continuity in the policies of the CBN. But many people are saying that one policy which he hasn't dealt with is the matter of um, interest rates. Because to start up new businesses, you have to borrow money. And if you're borrowing money at 22 25%, well, you're not likely to borrow at those kinds of rates. So what are your thoughts about this particular problem going forward? Thank you very much. Um, the subject and the issue of uh, interest rate has always been there uh, because it impacts on the cost of running business. Now, uh, interest rate is the price of a product. And like every price, it is determined price by <laughs> is the price of a product, <laughs> money. And like every other price as an economist, it is determined by the forces of demand and supply. Um, it's not everything that you do by fiat. Of course, it is important as uh, uh, the, the CBN governor or the monetary uh, you know, uh, arm of government uh, to make sure that you manage this, uh, this rate you know, to, to a certain, certain level. We also need to understand that there are basically uh, three main variables that you look at in an economy that have to be carefully managed and balanced. Uh, one of them is the interest rate, uh, then of course the action rate, and then inflation. So there is the act of delicate and careful balancing. You cannot just fix a rate. We are running more like a market-determined economy mm -hmm. with some levels of uh, intervention because we know that uh, there is what is called market failure, just as you have government failure. So to the extent that the market can fail, 
you have to, you know, intervene, you know, in order to arrive at an optimal level for these various prices. So they go in different directions. So if you want to maintain stability in the exchange rate, you cannot at the same time, you know, try to intervene in interest rate determination. The same thing, inflation, you know, they, they try to work against each other. So you need to delicately balance this. But interest rate is not the only thing that affects, you know, the cost of uh, running business. In fact, we all know that the cost of fuel, many, you know, branches of banks, they all have, you know, their own separate fuel. The, price, the, the cost of this are even much more than the interest rate. But I do agree with you that interest rate needs to be managed to a certain optimal, I call that optimal level, that will not hurt other variables in the economy. Because the overall objective of monetary policy is to ensure macroeconomic stability. Mm -hmm. Okay, please hold your thoughts there. Mm -hmm. We need to go on a quick break. When we'll come back, we'll bring in the CEO here of Avi Invest Securities and talk with Fasha. But just take a moment and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back. We're still continuing the conversation around the economy, rethinking the economy. Dr. Bolo, you were talking about the question of the interest rates and why do we have to have a continuity if that hasn't been looked at? Yes. Um, we're talking of uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Mefiele and, and his team. Uh, interest rate is not the only determinant why Mr. President has appointed him. There are several other things, good things, that uh, the government has seen. Uh, like I said, interest rate is one of the variables, one of the determinants uh, to ensure macroeconomic stability. Um, let me make this point. Mayfield is somebody I know personally, okay? He's a man with the right leadership. We're talking about leadership now. Uh, interest rate, uh, exchange rate, you take the totality of this and assess the, the man and his team. One area which he has tried to uh, deliver is in the area of uh, ensuring um, fiscal policy, um, monetary policy coordination. Mm. That's very key. That's one area where people have not looked at it. And I want to say it should continue in that direction. My only problem is that try to coordinate the fiscal arm and also the monetary arm in order, in order to ensure macroeconomic stability it has to be done, you know, in, 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 in a more modern way, you know, through using, you know, information and technology, platform and architecture, in order to integrate both the fiscal and monetary policy. The point is, uh, macro, uh, you know, monetary policy on its own uh, does not deliver the, the results. It is the integration within the framework of, uh, within what we call the general equilibrium framework that you can deliver on macroeconomic stability. So I would say he's been doing his very best to ensure this coordination. But my recommendation, and if he wants to leave a good legacy behind, is to ensure that he pursued this to its logical conclusion by ensuring the integration of both the fiscal and monetary policy, as well as structural policies and actions that affect financial risk. Okay, all right, let, let's, let's come to you here. Um, Mr. Ayodeji, the matter of continuity, there are those who say you can't expect to be doing the same thing, have the same team, and expect a different result. Do you think we are on course in this, in this move that the government is making? Yeah, um, it's uh, beyond uh, the most based on expectation. We had all um, mostly anticipated um, a new CBN governor when you also look at in terms of the past governors. And um, though the governor started on a very shaky note, if you recall, um, six months to um, the administration, the last Buhari's administration, there were, there were no ministers, and he had to be saddled with the responsibility of trying to ensure that the economy stabilized amid um, the economic recession we're yeah, going time, through then, yeah. uh, which it needed to reflate the economy. So in, a Though, way, in a way, a lot of things were thrown at a, him. A lot, of things, a, a lot of things, challenges were thrown at him. Uh, you also note that there was also, in terms of taking a, a position regarding the exchange rate, was one of the major flaws of 
his last administration. However, with the introduction of the investors and exporters window that has created liquidity, has helped um, improve in terms of attracting foreign investment, also in terms of stability in the FX, that has really improved. So, but um, overall, um, maybe part of what this current administration uh, just looked at is because of also is, um, he has also helped in terms of supporting them in terms of growth. There have been a lot of interventions under um, the, the current CBN governor. In terms of intervention for the agri sector, the power sector, the aviation sector. I think there's one coming up for the creative um, industry. So there's been a lot of um, support in terms of trying to support and um, ideas that will engender growth, looking at the critical sector. If you also recall, the um, the introduction of the differentiated um, cash reserve requirement uh, for, to enable banks to lend to some of these sectors in quote that are um, employment elastic sectors. Um, some of them are those major sectors that may have helped in terms of the decision of this government to ensure that they retain in for the second term, just to ensure that maybe there's continuity. Um, they've been able to, maybe in terms of, um, it, may start, it, may, it might have started very rocky, but in terms of the way they have been working now, in terms of supporting some major growth, especially the agri sector where this current government is trying to see how they would improve within that space, that may be a major factor. And in terms of FX, stability is key. And I feel that even for the foreign investors, though expectation in terms of what um, the engagement with foreign investors, what some of the major concerns that uh, most of the foreign investors had, and that's why you see responsible for the low foreign direct investment that we are seeing. Um, but if um, learning from the past, the governor may come up with in terms of strategies of how we talked about interest rate then, which is critical. And I feel that the CBN may be in the right position to see how they want to start what we call like a credit rating system that you find in developed world so that every in individual will work towards achieving a credit rating that will earn you a reduced interest rate. Mm. And as a result, one, it will help reduce non-performing loans. And two, you need credit to grow this economy. But most of the banks, because of the structural issues, um, the risk within the business environment, have not been lending significantly. But if we're able to take care of some of those things to I feel that it was going to leave a lasting policy. Okay, Tokwe, one of the questions I, I will put to you is this matter of purchasing power. Now, if our economy is at the state it is, they've talked about, the guests here have talked about how the CBN governor at a certain time appeared to be the one man who was carrying a lot of things on his shoulder. He was having to answer to questions that a lot of people were not answering to because he was like the only man in the governance team because at that point there were no ministers so he was carrying a lot and at that point Nigeria was in a recession so for him to have stood his ground and was able to do all of that and help to stabilize the economy to some extent I mean this is what everyone here had appears to have said there is need for him now that the economy is stable to be given a room so that he can express those ideas probably that he has at the back of his mind okay talk about my question to you is in the face of all of this, there is a new minimum wage, but the purchasing power of that minimum wage is equivalent, by some calculations in some schools of thought, is equivalent to the minimum wage prior to that. Shouldn't we be looking at another way to handle all of this? Well, uh, thank you, Nata. Um... Um, you know, first of all, to say that, uh, you know, the work of uh, a central bank uh, traditionally is all about price stability, which uh, dovetails into what you just said, you know. Uh, what affects the purchasing power of the Naira is actually the inflation, which is at 11% uh, thereabouts today and hovered around uh, that level. Uh, however, like uh, Dr. Bolo said, you know, the central bank anywhere in the world is actually faced with uh, those three things which we could call a trilemma. Uh, you know, the, managing the level of interest rates, inflation, and exchange rate. And knowing that you can only pin down two of them, 
uh, no matter what you do, one of them escapes. So I, I kind of see the work of central banking as a losing game. Uh, right now, if interest rates is high. We, we can't do much about that. We're just barely holding down inflation at 11%, or 11.2%. However, we've at, achieved some level of exchange stability. Uh, my opinion, though, is that um, we can't just uh, target uh, stability for too long. It's great to be stable. You don't want to toy with a lot of economic indices, but at some point you need to grow. Uh, what, where we're not doing very well is in the area of GDP growth. So we're just managing about 2% or 2.0%, 2.05 there about, uh, in GDP. Uh, when, infla uh, when inflation is at, of course, 11, uh, interest rates are over around 25 to 30%. And of course, uh, population growth is 3.2%, uh, meaning that that's a massive negative growth that you have on your hands. I have always, you know, uh, opined that uh, we should be actually at a level of development right now. We should be doing double-digit growth. We should be targeting double-digit growth. As a matter of fact, Nigeria's economic growth is the lowest even in, in, in Africa. Uh, the other time I saw something from Bloomberg to that respect. Uh, countries like Senegal are growing at 8%, Ethiopia at 8%, and so on. However, having said this, we seem to have, of course, in Nigeria, uh, in recent time, put too much on the central bank. The central bank actually is not supposed to be concerned with fiscal policy. But it has been noted by, uh, it's been noted by economists around the world, including uh, Paul Krugman and so on, that usually in emerging economies especially, every time there's a downturn, central banks tend to you know, delve into fiscal policy. That's why you have the anchor borrowers program. You have this one coming up for entertainment sector, you have all sorts of interventions everywhere. You can't blame the central bank. If the fiscal guys aren't moving, then the central bank has to kick in. And I think that's where Emefile got it right. Um, you know, when he came in about five years ago, he actually did say, as part of a speech coming in, uh, that he was going to be a bit uh, unconventional by inserting, um, you know, the, the, the target of employment into his remit beyond inflation targeting. Again, I'll say, that we shouldn't at our level be targeting inflation at 2-3%, we should be targeting growth. If this country was growing at 10%, China just slowed down to 6%. India is growing at 8.5%. India has been growing at eight, around that average for the past 10 years, and that's remarkable for, for a $2 trillion economy. And uh, I believe that we could do a whole lot better than this. Um, and, and it's great that um, the central bank has done its own bit, but I think we still have a fiscal challenge. For example, raising revenue is still a big problem. Funding budgets, of course, you know, I ran for president, and uh, that was one of the researches I did, and I put that in the space, uh, that it wasn't good enough for an Angola to be doing a bigger budget than Nigeria, uh, 25 million people compared to 180 million, 190 million people here. We could do a whole lot better. Uh, just two days ago, the president stepped down a bill on tourism, for example, an NTDC bill, and um, part of that bill was to say that uh, travelers should pay a token of you know, a certain levy on tourism levy, and also that uh, apart from travelers, hotels, you know, people who check in into hotels. Uh, you know, and I was sad because, look, w w we need to move away from this uh, fixation with crude oil and all of that. You know, this economy is much larger than it is. I believe that this economy should actually be double, triple where it is right now. Uh, I was in Ghana just two weeks ago, and even going to a restaurant, we paid 1% tourism levy in a restaurant on your bill. You know, you paid 1% tourism levy, 2.5% Ghana education tax fund on your bill in a restaurant, 2.5% uh, national health insurance levy, you know, and of course 12.5% VAT in a restaurant. So whereas we're not, I'm not asking that we should have that kind of very harsh fiscal regime and tax regime, but we need to begin to get serious with ourselves. We are protecting ourselves too much. You know, the elites don't want to pay, and of course those who are way down there, uh, we need an elite consensus right now in order to move forward. But as far as central banking is concerned, uh, navigating the trilemma and what they call the unholy trinity uh, of interest rates, inflation, and exchange rate, we are not doing badly in central banking right now. But we cannot get stuck at that level. We need to begin to think of moving that uh, GDP growth level uh, from 2% or 2.5% where it is to at least 8, 9, 10%. We should be targeting that kind of, we need to be very aggressive. 